Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Friday Frothy. Another Friday night, another couple of great guests. We'll be back in just two seconds. Grab yourself a beer. This is going to be fantastic tonight. Sydney to Hobart races. Can't wait. This is the Friday Frothy. Guys, News. You're listening to the Friday Frothy. What a fantastic show. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Glenn. How are you, Jeff? Mate, fantastic tonight. There's a couple of uh, fine-looking gentlemen in Ooh. the, uh, in the uh, establishment tonight, mate. I, let, let's introduce you guys, because I, I, I want to get onto this, because I've been excited all week about this one, Glenny. Sydney to Hobart, which I'm, I'm not a yachtsman myself. But we go, don't we? we well, every we do. time the boys, have, uh, well, whether they've, they've been in it or not, uh, we, we go down, don't we? We do. Yeah, look at the boats. We do. Ooh. This gentleman over here, ladies and gentlemen, Ed Saltis, uh, 38... 38 races, yeah. yeah. 38 Sydney mm. Hobarts. Mm. Winner of the 1998. Uh, how the do bad we, one. How bad do we describe one. it? The hardest race there's ever. The hardest race of all time. Ever. Uh, gentleman over here, Andrew Davidson. Um, how many for you, Andrew? Only eight. Eight. But you started in 1998 mm. on that race. 98 was the first one. And I can't believe oh, he, so went, he went back. They're old salties, mate. You went back. They're old salties. There's no about that. My goodness. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. Uh, thanks, Fantastic boys. to have you yeah. here. Um, let's just jump straight into it. Um, how did you guys get into into yachting? How long have you been doing it for? And, and also, what was your age of your first city in Hobart? How old were you guys? Do you want to kick off? Uh, well, I, I started sailing um, with my brother, who bought a yacht back in, in the mid-80s. And uh, I sailed a few races with him and then decided it was a good idea if I bought a boat myself. Yep. So I bought a boat, a little plywood boat. Raced around the river here, um, and it all stemmed from there, and that was back in the mid '80s, so yeah. thirty years. Thirty years, thirty mate. years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We start showing our age, don't we? <laughs> so, and, and, and what age for the Sydney and Hobart? What you have your yeah, first race? What was your first what, first race? Um, Jeez, my maths isn't very good on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> a few beers. Oh, That's all good. Look, yeah. we, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that into that 1998 race soon, guys, because I'm sure you've got some yeah. some horrific stories to tell us. Um, what about yourself? They had a last start. Yeah, look, I've been sailing all my life. My old man <clears throat> was heavily into ocean racing. He's done 22 Sydney Hobarts, I think, 15 on his own boat. So as a young kid, I was always around boats and loved it. Um, my first race was 18, but I was keen to go at 17, and uh, the old man said, no, you're not, not going to go because you're still not a man yet. Uh, and now now it's actually law. Since the 98 race, you can't go until you're 18 years old. Oh, is that right? So he was actually okay. ahead of his time in a way, but it really pissed me off because I wanted to go. Yeah. I, was sort of <laughs> I thought I was ready. but yeah. So our yeah, first race was uh, 1979 when I turned 18, and uh, okay. pretty much every race since then. Yeah. yeah, wow. Did you hear that, mate? We know, and but, but why is the Sydney to Hobart such an iconic race? What what is it that everyone? It's like the it's like the Test match. Well, it's like it's like the on, MCG. On it's Day. like the uh, as Ed's a uh, rugby union man. It'd be like the uh, the Bledisloe Cup. Like there, like there you go. Like that. It's there you go. So but it, that's yeah. what it's is it? Cream what makes cream, it? Mark? So, well, so from, from my point of view, it's uh, I've I've done a lot of other races up and down. I'm a, I'm a Sydney. I've only just come to Hobart recently, so I'm born and bred in Sydney. And I've done a lot of races up and down the east coast of Australia: Sydney, yeah. Southport, Sydney, Lord Howe, <coughs> Sydney, Mooloolaba. They're all great races, but they don't cut the mustard in terms of being a tough, hard race the way the Hobart does. So it's 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 like the Everest of, of ocean racing in. Certainly in Australia, if not even broader than Australia. There's other races, but the Hobart is just... Just to finish a Hobart race is actually an achievement. There's other races, yeah, you finish them and it's no big deal, but yeah. this race is so hard that just to get here is, you know, it's not so, a bad effort. Yeah, yeah so on the, on the boat, boys, so obviously it all depends on size of the boat. but It always does, one, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like with, the, with the ones that you've come down oh, with, so with all those ones you've made, how many... On the on the it's the Rambler, is it that you made? Midnight Rambler, yeah, Midnight the Rambler. Rambler. So yeah. give that a mm. give that a massive plug right Good now. Midnight, Midnight Rambler. Rambler. <laughs> so all you yachting people, look out for that. Uh, but how many normally on that, mate? Over the years, does it vary? Uh, or geez, yeah, I, I've had a bunch of uh, I've had two forty footers, pretty competitive racing forty footers. I did about 
owned those with mates, with partners. Uh, 12 Hobarts on those. And the crew for that was 10. We had 10. 10. Whereas our current boats are Sydney 36. Yep. Uh, we have eight on that. Okay. So it, it does depend on the size of the boat. Yeah. You know, the uh, big boys have you know, 20 crew, 20, crazy yeah. numbers. But uh, uh, 10's, 10's hard enough to manage, let alone any more than 10. I've got to ask, with a crew of 10 or a crew of 20, I mean, if we were on, on, on a yacht, does everyone have a job or do you have a couple of guys there who just get sink piss all night? No, <laughs> <laughs> you that on that. no they're, they're a dry boat. Yeah, <laughs> dry boat. Yeah. And, and I can assure you, well, you, you really. don't feel like sinking piss. Yeah, no. I can imagine it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how you're still doing it. On your mind. Let's get that right now. I don't know how you're still doing it. I've watched it and I've seen it come in from Bishno there off the, off the coast and waves down like this and boats like that. Oh, I don't know how you do it, but. So, yeah. what do you do there, mate? So, everyone's got a job. Right? Yeah, what do you do? Jobs. I mean, you, you, there's different roles on the boat, and I guess the principal role is that the skipper, and I've Ed, well, been the skipper of his boat yep. in um, all of those races, all 38 races. Yeah. I haven't been the skipper, but I've been the tactician and or navigator. Um, so, you've got somebody that looks after the tactics of the boat. Yep. Um, you've got helmsmen on the boat, so you've got a number of Roughly about half the crew would be helmsmen. Mm. Um, so on a crew of eight, you'd probably have four helmsmen. Okay. Um, the yep. skipper and the tactician would both be helmsmen, generally. Um, so it, it varies from boat to boat. What, what about the communication? Is there is a lot of yelling and... No, 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 I mean, as in the racing part of it. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, is it, you all know your job and you just sit there and shut up or do you yeah. is, try to is, is there, no, come on mate you know get, get on the winch you know yeah. start uh, all it, this sort of stuff uh, it varies from crew to crew and, and yeah. obviously varies with the personalities as well yeah um so you've got to get on yeah i mean that, <laughs> that's what on, yeah. does happen <laughs> there's been cases i mean we could tell you stories about crews that don't get on yeah yeah but on the boats that i've sailed on all the crew get on well everybody knows the role got, yeah and I mean, last year we had a bit of success with the race, but we had everybody had a defined role on the boat. Yeah. And yep. it worked perfectly. Hmm. So, okay. so being a, a tactician, are you spending most of your time down in the cabin or are you up on, um, on the deck? In the race last year, we, we had nine crew on a boat on a 36 footer, the same size as Ed, Ed's boat. And my job was basically the tactics for the whole race. So I spend a bit of time on deck, but a lot of time down below looking at the computer, yep. assessing the weather conditions, looking at the best um, best route, yep. depending on the currents and the and the prevailing weather. Yep. And we downloaded weather from a satellite connection twice a day. Okay. So, interesting, isn't it? Is, yeah. this, is this something you've had to learn, or I mean, sorry, what, um, you actually schooled for, or is it just something you picked up? Something I picked with, with up. By, yeah, you pick it up by experience. I yeah. sailed with some very good sailors in Hobart. And I talk to a lot of people about sailing and, and look at a lot of stuff on the internet and read a lot of stuff. And you just absorb all that information and it's good to be able to put it into practice. Oh, oh. Okay. Um, and, and chasing wind. I mean, it sounds a bit gross, to know, chasing wind, but anyway. Um, <laughs> how, how does that go? I mean, how far out away would you go? Like in sitting to Hobart, you've come out the heads and, and, it, and you're sitting in a, in a still breeze. And you're looking at it, something saying, all right, there's some strong wind over here. How far out will you go to, to track that wind? Yeah, quite a long way, potentially. <laughs> yes, I mean, as far as you need to. There's there's a thing in the race they call the rum line. Um, then it's not drinking rum either. Oh, not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that's the obvious thing for non-sailors. It's, it's the closest to having a rum when you finish. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's a direct line on the course from Sydney down to Hobart. Okay. And so that's one thing to keep in mind. You don't stray too far from that unless there's a good reason to. And the shortest distance is the fastest distance. Yep. Um, cool. If you want to go out your way off the run line, you've got to have a good reason to do it. Yeah, okay. um, and you're looking for wind changes. Um, anything that will give you an advantage weather-wise. Um, we generally look probably six hours ahead. At Something I learned very early on in the piece is, is you don't worry about the conditions that you're in at the time. Mm -hmm. You look at what the conditions are doing about six hours down the track and you're going to be 50, 60 miles further yeah, down planning, the coast. You're planning yeah. for that. Though, yeah, yeah, so you, you're always working to try and to get yep. to that position, the, the best advantage. way to get to that position. Yep. Yep. And it, it, is, is the whole field following? They, they all follow each other or do, oh, do yeah. people go different ways? No, not necessarily. Different, different people have different ideas on things. 
<coughs> different information as well. Yeah, Those yeah, that have yeah. more up to date information go a different way for yep. no apparent reason, and it's only in hindsight you realise they had that information. So yeah, that's yeah. why they went that way. Now, yeah. as the, the skipper, you're behind the wheel, I'm gathering. Yeah, that's look. I'm I'm one of the helmsmen, yes, and I, I also call made well. I call the shots, but that's a bit of a over exaggeration because this guy, the tactician, is so important. And why I say that is. You can work your backside off to get, get the boat to go a quarter of a knot fast, which may which may give you yep. two miles over your opponents. But if Andy gets the tactics right and we go offshore ten miles or inshore ten miles, you can go and lose ten miles with, yep. with, with versus yep. that two miles. So tactics is so much. Everything is important, but you can gain big time or lose big time if you get your tactics wrong. So this guy's probably the most important guy in the boat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest factors with the tactical side in, in this particular race, and it, it'll vary with different races around the world, but um, we've got a thing down the East Coast called the East Australia Current. Yes. And it's a band of warm water that comes down from Queensland, uh, runs down parallel with the coast. And then as it gets down towards Bass Strait, it spins off in different directions. <coughs> and there's these eddies where um, cold water and warm water meet and mm -hmm. the interaction between the two causes currents to flow in different directions and I learnt this in one of the early races I did that if you don't get into the current and you've got a four knot current going south if you're not in it and another boat is they're going four knots they're faster than four. you yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah. and at the speed our boat you know very in 36 foot boats and particularly the back end or the smaller part of the fleet these the advantage or disadvantage you get from the current is huge compared yeah. to the maxis yep we're doing seven knots upwind, probably 10 to 12 knots downwind. Mm. The maxi will do 14 knots upwind and mm. wow. 30 knots downwind. Yeah, so huge. a two or three knot current is a far greater percentage of our boat speed yep. than mm. it is of a maxi. Yep. Okay. So it's important for them, it's absolutely critical for us. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So I spend about a month before the race, like the whole of December, Looking at what the East Australia comes. So you're looking at all the that right? Is that, yeah. So you're wow. all the information. All the information. Anything that's current. I'm oh, sorry. Um, current. Prior. Anything that's current. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Google, 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 current. Current. Fresh comedy there. Yeah. So any prior to the race. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're looking at that. And, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good information provided by the CSIRO. Yep. With their ocean monitoring okay. system. Yep. 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 So we we have a good look at that, and and I'm sure every. Well, most people in the race, and certainly the, the navigators, would be well aware of what's yeah, going sure. on. I, I, I yeah. think to the average Joe that that hasn't been out on a boat, or and I have, I've been out on a boat, I was no damn good, <laughs> but let me tell you, yeah. but, but to go out on one, uh, and uh, I mean, you have got to have a role in it, that's as much yeah. as I know, you've got, to, yeah. Yeah. you've got to be participating in, in getting that boat forward. If you don't know what you're doing, you, you, you're no good to the crew. Yep, that's it. So. Guys, I, I just want to say uh, hello to, to the um, our regulars who are watching tonight. Uh, Great absolutely. to have you on board. Um, if there's anyone out there who has any questions, just send them through because I'm, I'm just looking at my phone now. If you've got any questions about the city of Hobart or anything you want to know to ask Ed or, or Andrew, send it through and uh, yeah, we'll let them know. Oh, you beat me to it. Any questions? Bang. Got me. Um, guys, when you're doing the city of Hobart, do you get any sleep? Not a lot of sleep. <coughs> um, it's a pretty aggressive watch system that I run and most racing boats run, so uh, you, you, you're down below. So there's on watches and off watches, but when you're down below, you've got to get all your ready gear off and get into your bunk, and you try to sleep, and then before you know it, you can tap on the shoulder, you're up, mate, and you've got to get the gear back on again. All right. So how long would that be, roughly? Uh, look, you'd, 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 if, if you've got six hours sleep a day, you'd be lucky. And normally the first day, we're all too ner oh, I'm anyway, too nervous and hyped up to get much sleep at all, but by day three, you're so stuffed, you can just sleep when you, 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 you drop you know yeah. yeah but probably six hours a day if you're lucky so by the time you get to hobart you 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 you're pretty exhausted physically and emotionally exhausted mm. Mm. Uh, with the coming out of the uh, heads which is obviously you know it's folklore now isn't it i mean it, it's it's the, one of the biggest things obviously the start and the finish so the start head uh like with midnight rambler in in the past the actual starting how do they Obviously, in position and that in the harbour. Oh. How does that all? How do you how do, do, how do they? How do they work out 
which boat starts where and all that sort of oh, thing. Oh, look, it's all the rules of sailing. Say so port and starboard. You may have heard of port and starboard. It's a basic rule. Starboard's right away. Port and starboard's right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on a couple of cruises. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the left and right. No, I know starboard. I've got that part yeah. right. Yeah, sorry. sorry. So th there's basic rules, and if you get those rules wrong, you, you get protested and can be protested out of the race. So you need to be very careful about getting out of the harbour without any bingles or without any, any breaking of the rules. Mm. And everyone's hyped up, so there's a lot of yelling and screaming going on. There shouldn't be, but there is. So get, getting a good start mightn't sound like much, but it's a real psychological thing because you, you, you're out of their heads, um, beating the boats you had to beat out of the heads, and you've got your kite up, your spinning up, and you're running down south, and they're behind you. It just lifts the whole crew. So yeah, even, yeah. even if it's only a few hundred metres of being in front of them, that's, the that just gives you, you know, it's like getting the first points yeah. in a footy game. It yeah. just gives you a, a bit but of the, a the, buzz. the actual start of the race, where you guys are just sort of yeah, tacking, tacking in the background, yeah, 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 and you yeah, all yeah. meet the line at the same time, how yeah, the hell does that happen? Yeah. yeah, well, it's all again. It's just based on rules and who can be more precise than than the next guy. So it's it's being able to handle your boat very well, which yeah. means putting your brakes yeah. on, uh, yeah. letting the sails luff, and luffing into the breeze and pulling away and getting power when you need to get power. Oh, okay. So it's it's pretty much like driving a car: accelerated brake just to get right to the. So you can the slow them down. Slow them yeah. 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 Um, guys, we've got a question here from Brent, one of our viewers. Uh, how do you cover costs for the race? Is it all sponsors, Ooh, fundraising, or personal, question. or a mixture? Thanks, right, Brent. thanks, Brent. Do you want to have a go? Or well, uh, Ed, being an owner, would know more than I would about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, it, it is a mixture, and, and in the Sydney Hobart last year, we had about 150 boats. Um, probably, th there's a division within the race for, for boats that are crewed by fully amateur crews. Mm -hmm. And out of the 150 boats, there was about, I think, 40 of them were fully amateur crews, which meant 110 had professional crews on board, so they yeah. come with extra costs. Um, a lot of boats are sponsored. A lot of them, a lot of boats are owned by rich individuals. Um, Which isn't us, just by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah look, look, I mean the budget that, that our sort of boats run on. Down on us. Come on. No, the, the budget that our sort of boats run on. The owner puts in a fair bit of money, and yeah. um, I'm not an owner, and Ed is, and he'd know how much. Whether he wants to say or not, I, I don't know. Oh, no, I've got a fair, no I've got a fair idea. It'd be a, well, it'd be a pretty um, the, like the, the smaller boats like ours. I mean, I know a few of the races I've done. We throw in a few hundred bucks to the owner to cover expenses, yeah. which is huge, um, big help. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it's a mixture. Like, there's no, there's no easy answer to that. But the good thing about it, and one thing that. Um, is evident in this race. Like we might run on a budget of a couple of thousand dollars out of the owner's pocket, and the crew all chips in a few hundred bucks here and there, and we get and go and we go and do the race. And a maxi like Wild Oats yeah. runs on a budget of about ten million dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's And we yeah. can beat them. We can on handicaps to beat them, which is what yeah, it is. Yeah, on, on yeah. It's, it's yeah. like a yeah. golf game, isn't it? It's a little bit like you know, with yeah. your twenty-seven money, or your money one, you know, you can beat them. It's yeah. like a golf game in the water. <laughs> right. well, that's where you get in yeah. that, mate. We've got so, a, in the water. Got, a, got another one here from, from Kerry Carroll from Victoria. Howdy, Kerry. Thanks, thanks for your question. Yeah, thanks, Kerry. How, how do you go with all the spectator crafts at the start yeah. of the race? Another good question. Great, yeah, look, great question. It's a, it's, it's a major problem. And boats over the years have, have hit spectator craft and been damaged. They have to pull out and go back to the you know, club mm. for a beer. Yeah. So they're pretty pissed off with that. Yeah. Um, in, in the old days, it was less regulated. So back in the 70s and 60s, there was no regulation at all, so these crazy boats would be all over Cabin the place, all over the they're yeah. cutting in front of you. Now the MSB, whatever they're called these days, Maritime Services Board, try to regulate it, so there, there's there's a no-go zone and, and we're in here and the, and, the, and the spectators are all on their side. Once you get through the heads though, that no-go zone doesn't exist anymore, so yeah. the boats start coming across you again. It's just a washing machine, trying to get away, frankly, but when you're down past Bondi and, and the spectators finally leave you, it's a sigh of relief right now, we can start racing you now. The, 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 the sea is more steady, it's not all washed up and the and the wind is steadier. So, yeah, yeah it's it's a real problem getting out of the heads. Yeah. Just, just another question, Ed, too, or both, but to both of you, really. All that way you've come from Sydney all the way through to Hobart, you've been in, in, in plenty, as Davo's been in eight, and you've been in 158. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, at the end of the day, is there any part in that whole trip that you remember as your lease, <clears throat> and I'll put it that way, is there any part, whether it's from a, a part coming through Victoria or out of New South Wales or coming into Tassie, 
that you think that's a special time where we really, you know, I love this particular part in the race. Yeah. Is there, is there like anything a, like that's... A, sort of... Like a good bit of the road on a, for a exactly, motorbike. Yeah, like, exactly, you know. like you're going down Simmons Plains or something, mm. and you're, you're into the straight. Is there, is there a part in the race, you've done it that long now? Well, I've got my or, part, or just, it's, just, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly obvious answer for me, is Tasman Light, going around Tasman, Tasman Island. because you see it's, the end of the light. Yeah, it's it's the, the turning mark, in, so, yep. so the river's not too far right away. Yep. But yes, the awesome beauty of the place, you know, the rugged beauty of Tasman, even the Cape Rao, all, Rau, all, all yeah. that area yep. of coastline, it's just amazing. It, it, it just blows you away, yeah. Yeah. how tall and rugged the place is. So yeah. Tasman Light's always my thing, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Guys, yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with Ed on that, and, and being... From Hobart, yeah. Ed's a blow in from Sydney. Yeah. A blow in. <laughs> it's true. No, he's it's now true. resident in Hobart. But um, when you get to Tasman Island, quite often in the race, it's the first time you see land since you leave Sydney. Because we uh, tend yeah, to go, okay, off, so we tend to go offshore. Yeah, I forget that. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of boats stay well a fair off, way you? offshore and, mm. and don't close back in on the coast until they get down towards well, Tasman Island. Mm. You come in from a long way offshore. Yeah. Sometimes, depending on the conditions, you might get. No, you're not the Tasmanian coast a little bit. Okay. But quite often, Tasman Island's the first thing you see. But, I mean, for me, being a local, Tasman Island, you know you're home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, you know, you go around, it's a massive big rock. I don't know whether you've ever seen it, but it's quite spectacular, like Ed Incredible. says. Yeah. But we do so many races around here, um, around Tasman Island, yeah. up to Mariah and back. That we're in our home waters and, home and we know where we are. You know where we are. And used to it. Yep. I, I was the navigator on another boat, a local boat, last year, and I did plotted everything from the start to Tasman Island. Yep. Because yep. I knew when we got to Tasman Island, we Smooth. don't need to worry Smooth. about navigation. Nah, nah, Everybody nah, knows it. it. You know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, guys, um, let's let's get into this. Um, 1998 race, which was yeah. your first race and your um, first win. Have you, have you a, a, a one and only win. It's a tough race to win, but what yes. A, uh, what a race to win. That doesn't matter. Yes. I mean, yeah. to participate in Oh, jeez. But to win it, yeah, it, is, it was it, pretty huge. Fake. Well, that's, that's <clears throat> history books, mate. Yeah. Um, guys, today I, I put a little bit of a clip together uh, just so the viewers can have a quick look at some of the, the weather that you guys faced in that 1998 race. Uh, we'll just quickly, Al, can you play it there? Please. In just four days, we have witnessed extraordinary courage, strength, initiative and sadness. We've seen coordination at a level unprecedented in any other recent maritime operation in Australia. That's uh, a little bit of what these fellas have uh, have gone through. In. We, and I've got to I've got to ask, and I know you're the race winner, but at the moment I've got to look at you and say this is your first race. You've tackled those conditions, and you've yeah. gone back another seven times since. Why? Why? <laughs> how, uh, no, you, no, not why, you. but how? Yeah. <laughs> I, I figure that um, having got through that race, and, and we had a few issues. We got knocked down, had the mast in the water, and uh, things got a bit hairy for a while. And we turned around and went into Eden. And um, yeah. Yeah, we dropped the anchor, then we had somebody got injured. Um, oh. Fortunately, it wasn't that serious. We thought broken ribs, but um, mm. strapped him in a bunk, and I mean, he was a bit sore for a few days. But we left Eden then and continued on the race and actually finished the race. And well done. I think Ed said well earlier, that's, um, that's gutsy. often yeah. in the Sydney Hobart, yeah. just finishing the race is an achievement in itself. And mm. I mean, I've done eight, I haven't failed to finish any. But it's great. In out of eight races, we've had damage in four of them. Wow. 
Um, and it takes its toll on the boats and the crew yeah. itself. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. but, but having done this race, yeah. I mean, in those conditions, I feel it's... As far as experience goes, it's probably like doing 10 races in normal conditions. Yeah. And having faced those conditions. And I know now, if ever I'm doing the race and I'm in those conditions, I know what to expect and how to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, keeping so. your nerve would be a hard thing, Dave. I mean, it, it's... Yeah, we... I mean, you know, that's the thing. I, Everyone's I, looking at you. I would have been in the cabin yeah. crying. I'd be a little no. boy crying. <laughs> well, get me on, get me on. <laughs> I, would, it, it, it was, I suppose the adrenaline, I, yeah. I don't know... Is a more played sport and whatnot, and 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 Ed rugby, and you've played footy and and whatnot, but the adrenaline must take over, sure. Yeah, look, which gets you through. People have said to me <coughs> since that race, do you the get, adrenaline rush. Were you scared? And you have time, I suppose. No, I don't. I think your adrenaline kicks in, and, mm, and you don't you don't feel fear in that, no. in those mm. sort of conditions after the race. Bit emotional. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Were, were you were you on radio contact with other boats and what was happening and yeah. and knowing that people had lost their yeah. lives and what sort of stuff you yeah. were? Yeah. Can you hear what's going on? We well, heard a lot of stuff on the radio, but I mean, from my point of view, I don't know about Ed. We mm. didn't understand the enormity of it until we finished the race. Until you finished. Yeah. 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 That was the same for us. We lost our radio because the boat we got knocked down three times. Yeah, and there was a lot of water down below. And uh, you know the, the boat wasn't sinking, but it was close to it. Just water gets in everywhere. Yeah. And our HF radio got water on it, and HF radios don't like water, so that that didn't work. Yeah. We got it working down off around Bishop. It started working again. Finally, we managed to get it going. But so short answer is, we only heard the first part of the hell that was going on. Then after that, we just didn't know what the hell was going that, on. Yeah. What if we went? How far off land was you there? I mean, you said about the only time you see land, but a lot of boats ended up in. I'm sure there was one or two ended up in Bishnoe, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, some, one, some, one some boats do retire. I, I actually retired to Bishnoe one year and went to the pub at Spring Bay, had a beer nice. with us. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, when, when, when you get capsized, I and mean, you just said you were yeah. capsized three times, you've got guys on the actual yacht manning, manning the boat. Mm. What what happens? How does this work? I mean, yeah. do you do a full 360 or does it, it just wasn't a 360, back? thank God. My, my father did, my old man did, in 1965, he went 360. We, we went down, masters like this, 90 degrees is like that, we went down like that, so the keel's up here and the master's down here. Wow. Then, luckily, the keel got us up again, but we were, we were down, you know, it was a knockdown, like, it was a pretty bad knockdown. We had five guys below, purposely to, if the worst happened and guys were washed overboard, there was only two up on deck. We had a crew of seven, so there were two on deck, five below. Yeah. And those two were lashed on with, um, yeah, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the tethers. Harness and a tether. Yeah. I, I was steering yeah. the arms. I, I was washed overboard, and and the tether didn't break, luckily, so I'm in, in the water getting back in the boat. No the tether way. Got on again, and the boat came up as I got on, <laughs> and off we go again. So, uh, But there was no time to really think, oh, this is horrible. You were just trying to fight for your life so there was no yeah, it was I mean, yeah, we were probably all scared but it was too there were too many other emotions before being scared you know? I think I think it's good for the viewers and that to, to realize it's not just a matter of it looks glamorous no oh. boys come in she's glam it, that's what people see they, they see the start of it and all the bells and whistles hmm. let's be honest and then they see the end of it yeah. everyone coming in smiling you know and all the rest of it but what they don't probably understand is the actual what the boys are talking about is is, is life and death yeah. experiences that they're going through yeah. through the whole yacht race, and and the, the, the and the fighting, the fighting is is to get into position and to get that boat as quickly down there as yeah. they can, mate. So, so anyway. out of the hundred and fifteen yachts that started in that race, how many finished? Was it about forty six from memory? Oh, for, yeah, for yeah, forty I was something. Say about forty. <clears throat> so yeah. most pulled out. Mm. And, and the temptation to pull out was huge, absolutely mm. huge. Uh, um, we we're only forty miles from Eden when. We were getting the worst of it, and we could have turned round and round north to Eden, which was a haven. Yeah. But we were getting bashed up. So we were on a thirty-five foot boat, and the big waves, the bad waves, which came in sets of three, they were about sixty foot. These 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 big guys. So we're thirty foot. The waves are sixty thirty-five foot versus sixty feet. So to turn and run with these things, we all thought it'd be like being in the surf and catching a big wave. You're just going to get rolled and dumped. Yeah. So yeah. Our, our best chance, we all figured, was to keep taking these things on and getting over them rather than 
running back with them, albeit 40 miles to safety as opposed to 200 miles going into the teeth of this bloody thing. So, so Ed, what's, what's it yeah. feel like? I mean, I, I've got a little tinny and I've had a little fiberglass <coughs> boat and just going over a little wave, you know, crack, and they come mm. in. What's it like coming off a 60-foot wave? Do you yeah. feel like the boat's going to snap it up? It's, it's all about timing, um, getting it right, because the, the waves are coming through at like 10 to 15 knots against you. You're doing six knots, so there's 21 knots of differential. So if you get it wrong and don't pull away at the right time, you actually shoot up into the air and fall about 30 mm -hmm. feet in, in thin air down to hit the wave again. And it's like hitting concrete rather than water. The whole boat Jeez. reverberates and shakes. It, it Excuse me, you know, I've got, to, I've got to say, Glenn, you guys seem like normal people to talk to, but you're absolutely mad. And like Brent's just said, <laughs> they're pretty calm. You guys, know, have, you've got kahunas the size of basketballs, and I agree with you, Brent. Um, just can, stupid. Tourist, right? How do you, how do you crew, how do the crew secure themselves below duck uh, deck in rough weather? What, what do they do? Yeah, to that's tie a, another out? good point. Where do you go there? You, uh, you, there's no, to... Is there harnesses off the off the side there or in, in no, the side? You don't, no, you don't have harnesses, but um, on the berths or the beds. Yes. Um, Bucks, yeah. mm. And in those conditions, we don't get out of our wet weather gear. You just mm. go and lie down, and yeah, if you can so... get some sleep, good. If you can't, good luck. Mm. On the, the beds are about. I don't know whether you can see on camera, but probably two feet wide generally, and they have a cloth on the side of it. Yep. And the boat's on a hill, so the boat's leaning over, so the bed or the bunk you're sleeping in is, is, is on a slope. On a slope. And we have these things called lee cloths, and they're tied up above you. So you sort of slide into this sort of netting and just wedge yourself in. And you still get thrown around a bit, so you've got to Do you sleep? brace yourself with your feet. In those conditions, it's pretty hard. Yeah. In normal conditions, yeah. I do, but not a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Where the run yeah. come in handy. It, yeah, it depends on the conditions. And <clears throat> there's a lot of cases where boats do turn around 360 and their masts go down into the water and then come back up and people oh. are looking at the boat and it's pitch black inside oh. and they can't tell where the floor is and where the ceiling of the boat. And yeah. you're com completely disorientated. And how, how many times for, for both of you has that happened in, in your career that you've been on a yacht? <clears throat> three in that race, <clears throat> and pardon me, badly in the 93 race, I was on a tiny boat, a 30 footer, which really shouldn't have been there, only young back in those days, young and dumb, and it was in Bank Strait between Flinders Island and the mainland of Tassie, and Bank Strait's a nasty piece of work because the current runs in and out of there very hard, and it was current against wind, anyway, long story short, we got knocked over to about 160, almost upside down. Mm. We, uh, when we came up, there was water pissing out of the mast. So the mast was underwater, <laughs> so it was full of water. And but we we lost all our sails. We had a uh, fully reef main and a storm sail up, and they just just got blown away by the force of the water. So the mast was still there, thank God. But there were no yeah. no sails left. So that was a bad one. There's been some other ones where I've been close, but they're the four real bad ones that I've had anyway. Wow. Yeah. What was you, the you had, yeah. yeah? Yeah, we got knocked down in in back in the '98 race. Ed said he made a decision went on, and, and to his credit, he kept going and won the race. Yeah. We um we had a guy on our boat who um, the most experienced fellow was a fellow from Sydney called Bill Sykes, and he did the 79 Fastnet. Yeah, I don't know whether you've heard of the Fastnet race, it's a pretty famous race in the UK. Yeah. Um, in the south of England, it goes across to Ireland and around the Fastnet Rock and then back to... Oh, um, England again. In uh, England, yeah, whatever uh, the point is. Yeah. Yeah. But in that, 19, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In, um, in that 1979 race, um, the Fastnet, 15 people died. And wow. they had about 300 boats in the race, and it was it was just absolute chaos. Wow! So, we, we, yeah, so actually, and, and Bill yeah. Sykes had done that race, yeah. so so we sort of acted under advice from Bill, and he said if we were on a 50 footer, we'd keep going. We're on a 36 footer, we shouldn't be here. You shouldn't just be here. before you go. I just want to ask a question for the viewers. Mm. You guys are on 35, 36 foot. Yeah. What's wild oats? Yeah, well, it's a hundred feet. It's a hundred feet. Chalk and cheese. Oh, so it's a hell. couple of oats in, in to yeah. get to that. Holy it? hell. That's yeah. a big difference. Sorry, can you ask you No, no, me? no. I, I, I was just going to say, uh, when when that catastrophe happened um, in that yacht race uh, from Sydney to Hobart, I, I'm trying to remember myself listening to it. What was the, the rescue... Uh, that you had from that was it just helicopters for the people oh, that hit the water or was yeah, it mainly it, helicopters it was, it, yeah. that's all you could get out there 
Yeah, you couldn't get yeah, anyone yeah, in, the, out. in the stranded the stranded yachts are out there. What do they go? They yeah. tow them back, or what do they do? No, they just got them out of the water. Just they just got them out of the water. Boats, 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 let them go, get the humans. Their yeah, boats, they yeah. sink or they float. Yeah. And so if they float, they can salvage them if they sink. Wow. In the story. So, but, but human life's the, the thing. Yeah. So how many how many um, helicopters were it? Was it only, like, you obviously your, your, your rescue from... Um, oh, no, did they come in from Victoria? Or are they from Tasmania? Uh, they from... Yeah. I think most of them went out of... Malacoota or... Or Eden. Or Eden. 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 The Air Force was involved. I know the Air Force mm. were involved. Can you show me how many guys they actually fished yes. out of this? Yeah. Well, they actually got out of the drink? About no, 20 I hour can't hour remember, yeah. Yeah. That, those guys are the real heroes. They, they, they are. They, 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 they are heroes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Into, into, into that. To save yeah. someone else. That's, yeah. that's real yeah. guts. That's yeah. Yeah. They call them tea bags. Yeah. yeah. Because they, they go out of the helicopter Dunk. on a wire. Yep. And, and the waves, these 60 foot waves are coming through. So when they're in a trough, they're just suspended in the trough. And then a wave will come through and just. Just envelop these blokes in water. Uh, so they're like dunking them in a tea bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> yeah. unreal. I just, I'm yeah. trying to fathom, I'm trying to take but, but, it all. But, 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 I'm trying to take the whole thing in. As I said at the beginning of the show, guys, I, I, I just could not wait for this interview to talk to you there because it's just, it's something that you just can't comprehend what you've been through and, and how bad it was. And, it's just my, now talking yeah. um, to you, Ed. You were saying before you had a you had a choice of going on, or mm. or going because you had an injured crew member. Yeah, yeah. Look, we were forty, probably closer to sixty, between forty and sixty nautical miles into Bass Strait. So Eden was definitely there, but we really thought we would get we, we wouldn't survive getting back because the waves were just so bloody big. You know, the, the big guys were sixty feet. Mm. and you turn and run with those things. I mean, some boats got back, other boats... Quite a few boats got into trouble by turning around and going heading for oh, Eden. Okay. Because, you, yeah, because you're turning straight in. Yeah. They, they, they were rolled 360. One mm. of them was rolled 360 by doing this. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying our way was infallible. You know, not, nothing was infallible in that weather. But in our view at the time, that was the that was the least riskiest way to do it, and and luckily, touch wood, it actually worked for us. Yeah. yeah. And did did it get worse as you got into Bass Strait, or it was it got better? Yeah, we had ten hours of really horrendous stuff, which was life and death. You know, we were literally that next wave was going to get you. you know, it was that bad. Yeah, you know, we were probably twenty five hours of, of horrible stuff, but ten of that twenty five was just. Yeah, oh shit, we, 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 you know, we were thinking about young kids, we're not going to see them again, and all this sort of mm. And was that, that 10 daytime or nighttime? It was thankfully mainly daytime. It started at about 2 in the afternoon for us and finished at, you know, close to midnight. So, because it's summer, it was still sunny at 9 at nine p.m. So, for three hours, we had, because in the dark, it's a whole new horror show. You can't see them. Mm. You, can, you can hear the waves coming before you can see oh. them. Like a bloody oh, just, just, just a question there, boys. But, so, you know, Dave, you were saying to me before, you know, you're looking back and you're looking into the, the, the weather patterns and all the rest of it. Now, I'm not I'm not saying that you knew what was coming before well, you wouldn't. got there, if you know what I'm saying. But it, it's there times where it's called off and it, like they know it's just horrendous. The weather is going to be absolutely horrendous for, say, four days, five days, six days straight. And you know, they say, look, fellas, you, you're not going or, no. or is, it, is that just a non-negotiable? You just go out, no, you no, yacht east, and you just did it. That's, that's it. a good or, question. Yeah, yeah. that is oh, an interesting no. question because there hasn't been a case no. where this race has been called off. There you go. Yet. Yeah, yet. but there is provision in the sailing instructions that it could be. Yeah. Um, it would have to be extreme conditions. But there's another race that happens around about the same time, the Melbourne Hobart race. Yes, Melbourne And Hobart, that has yeah. been postponed because of weather. Yeah. They have a different issue there. They've got to get out the heads at Melbourne. Yeah, um, and getting out of Port Phillip Bay, yeah, in a well, big swell can be a bit. Hairy. I'm out of there in a in a big boat, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Around. yeah. that gets knocked yeah. around. So mm. we're yeah. trying to mm. trying to slightly picture a small so boat. Should, <laughs> yeah. should, should that should that race been abandoned? 1998. Uh, well, in, in my view, no, because no one knew it was uh, it was going to be that bad. It was it was an, an east coast low. It's called a bomb. An east coast low. It's, it's one happening now off the coast of New South Wales, as we speak. Mm. Yes, this yeah. one was particularly bad. It moved south, but it. Lows are very volatile, and, and I still challenge any meteorologist to really predict accurately what a low is going to do. This one, 
could have dissipated and moved offshore, but it, it instead it, it became twice as intense and fell off the coast of Victoria and, and the timing was horrendous. But that wasn't known until about 12 hours before it actually happened. And by that time, the fleet's already out there. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a car race. You can't say, into yeah. the beach, let's go home. Ah, you're already out there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, that question was brought up with the Commodore at the time. In I think it was on 60 Minutes. Mm. And they said, well, why didn't you call the race off? And he said, in the end, well, he said... We no, could have called the race off, you because you still we still got boats 100 miles offshore. You, you got it, that's right. Well, you should have just educated yeah. us, and I, I hope the viewers well, picked that up. Oh, Blake, Blake. You, you can't, can't turn. You, you can't just turn around and say, hello, I'm going home. You're there and you're stuck. Yeah. 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 Brent, Brent, Brent Forsyth's just written, uh, this is a brilliant interview, great insight, guys. So, yeah, uh, Thank thanks, you. thanks, Brent. No, no, I, I, knew, I knew it would be. Well, the thing is, the other thing is, too, it's like any sport. Now, I know it's competitive and, you know, we all want to beat one another, the different crews, but the actual camaraderie ship in the yacht clubs, that, is that a, as soon as the as soon as you race and you're finished and it's all over, I've got no doubt there's a bit of, uh, a bit of, bit of, bit of stirring going on and, and whatnot, but, the, and, and, you know, uh, <laughs> taking the piss as I call it, but, um, yep, be honest, yes. but um, <laughs> other than that, it, it must be, you, you must be like brothers too, oh. because, and sisters, because there's a lot of what women going through, that get on it, uh, on the, on the yachts as well, mm. but yeah. that, uh, it must be like one big family. Oh, yeah. it is, look, I mean, I've been sailing in Hope Hut for over 30 years, and and I know most people that sail, yeah. and everybody gets on with everybody else. We have a few issues from time to time, and people don't see eye to eye all the time, but yeah. everybody knows everybody, and, and everybody generally gets on. But particularly in a race like the Sydney Hobart, you've got to be very good friends with the people that you're sailing with, mm -hmm. because you're sharing a very confined space, oh. you're relying on them to save Their your life, yeah. potentially, like we saw in the, in the 98 race. Yep. So you wouldn't go and do a race like that unless you, you trusted and had complete faith in the people sailing with. Yeah. And I know some of the guys I've sailed with, I put my life in, that, in their hands in, yeah, in their yeah, hands. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you become very good friends with people like that. Yeah, of course. What's, of course. What's, to, to someone, and, and I know, um, like with the bigger boats, as you said, you know, they're, they're uh, X amount foot long and all the rest of it, 100 foot long and all this sort of stuff. They get... Now let's face it, they, they're big money, they get celebrities on there and uh, to me they don't know exactly what I just said, they don't know probably some of them what they're doing. Uh, is that just because the boat's big enough to be able to take those As a passenger. As a passenger? Short answer yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and the real racing, let's be honest, is with the smaller boats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look, because, I mean the, yeah. the 100 foot boats, Ed, Ed's from Sydney and he knows. Mm. Everybody in Sydney that sailed, like I know everybody I just, in Hobart. I just sailed. just jump in here. He's from Sydney, and he was the two thousand yachtsman of the year in New South Wales. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We will go there. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, on a on a hundred foot boat, you are you've got a lot of room to take passengers. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're passengers; they're people there. There's one particular boat that has a lot of celebrities on it. And I'm not saying they're passengers; they're people there. There's one particular boat has a lot of celebrities on it, and I think it helps with the TV coverage and their sponsorship. Yeah. So, you know, it's good for their image when they get yeah. Lane Beach yeah, Lee or Dan, whoever. Danny Green, and, haven't they, on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, do you call that? what do you call that when you're... Coffee grinders. Coffee grinders. Coffee grinders. Yeah. Coffee grinders. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. 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 I don't drink one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, obviously, <laughs> so how hard is it on the coffee grinders? Pretty, pretty Real hard, tough. yeah. The, the so uh, do you have to be built like you? Sheer, uh, oh, you bigger than me. You've got to be a <laughs> union guy to do that? Or? Uh, having said that, the modern boat, and I disagree with it personally, I've got to say, but the, but the modern boat has their motor, while they have this motor going yeah. 24 hours a day, yeah. which to me isn't a level playing field, and they have hydraulic winches, so you just push a button, no. and the, the winch turns oh, okay. more than what you, what five big guys could turn the damn thing. Just push a button and it turns. Ah, okay. so this this is on the this is on the bigger boats. This is what's happening. And yeah, and, 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 the rest, and the rest of them. The rest of them do it manually. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some are yeah. manually powered and some are um, powered by motors. It's just the so way the rules evolved. Too, it's so called yeah, progress. Yeah, just this is what I mean. The people don't know. People wouldn't know that. They all think, even though they're smaller boats, they all think you are all doing the same thing. You're not. Mm. Yeah, Tec like, mm. technically you're not. Uh, it, it, it's I a really, it, it, it's a, it's a bit of a bear my bonnet, so I'll jump in. But 
just imagine pressing a button all day and you've got huge power that never stops because the motor's going and generating its power. Yeah. As opposed to four of my crew have got to be grinding they're, they're winches. They're grinding, right, yeah. And, I, yeah, and, yeah. And, and they go for half an hour and they're totally stuck. Next guy comes in and you revolve them oh, over a day of hard wrong. racing. Yeah. So there's four guys totally stuck. You've got to feed them and, and, and give them water as opposed to pressing the button. So to me, it's just so not a level play. Are, are, you, no, are you getting no. more of a handicap because of that or...? They do handicap it supposedly, but in my humble opinion, not nearly hard enough. So the 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 benefit far outweighs the extra handicap they they get hit with for, for having it. But again, it's a man my bonnet, so I'll, I'll shut up now. No, 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 no. Say what you're bloody thinking. Yeah, you've got the floor here, mate. That's it. That's that's what we're about. I hey, mean, that's it. I can, I can assure you, there's a lot of people agree with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, my word! Yeah. I think everyone. Well, well, I, don't, well, I don't know anything about sailing, and I'm I'm agreeing straight away. I think that's a bit unfair. But anyway, there you go. I just I just want to go back to to you winning winning the 1998 race. We've seen it. It's tragic. We've heard about the lives lost. Um, the the boats that were lost. At the moment, we've got coronavirus and all of this. Link in, guarantee it. Okay. Where at the moment we got coronavirus and the AFL is pushing ahead, or the rugby league is pushing ahead, and a lot of people are saying, is this the year that you want to win the grand final, or is this the year that you don't want to win the grand final? Huh. When oh, you yeah. when you good, won good that point, yeah. when mm. you won that race and you got to Hobart, mm. um, obviously, and you said you hadn't heard what was really going on, the lights lost and all sorts of stuff. So we got there. Yeah. Where where does it? How did you, how did you see it? Was was it? Wow, we've won this race! Oh my god, you know this is really. It was bad. very tough, very tough indeed. So my old man, one of the guys that died, was a fantastic seaman. Jim Wall was his name, classmate of my old man. So mm. it, it hurt our family deeply. But well, Dad got on the phone just after I got in to the dock, and he was in tears. I never heard my old man cry. You know, one of these tough guys. Back mm. in his day, you wouldn't cry if you were yeah. an old man. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but my brother was there as well, so he had two of his sons there. Yeah, and he yeah. said, thank Christ, you're, 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 you're still both alive and you won this bloody mm. race. And he was yeah. in tears and yeah. at the death that it happened. But because this thing's like religion for the soldier's family, it has been for decades. So to, to win the race, even in a bad year, meant so much. But equally, people have, uh, have died. So it was a very, you know, we, we quietly celebrated the seven crew at, at our own, what we had achieved. Um, but we had to be equally you know, yeah. aware of the, yeah. of the tragedy that happened. By, the, by the, <coughs> the sailing community, is that seen as one of the best wins ever? Oh, look, uh, people always say, where were you in the 98 race? Yeah, I was there and I won it. <laughs> uh, so the, it, it's, it's always a race that, is, that will never be forgotten. I'd like to, uh, and I'm probably getting too old now, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to do well in one that wasn't so tragic you know yeah, yeah. so winning it was great that year toughest race ever but the tragedy mixes with the, the victory yeah, yeah. so yeah, to do so absolutely. without that would be nice but mm. you know one day you never know i'm getting older unfortunately never unfortunately <laughs> as it's now saying i mean yeah, it, all sports it doesn't matter as i said we talk about rugby union rugby league uh, Australian rules or jumping off a cliff or whatever, but that element of danger is always there. That's coming up. And mm. you, well, it is, you can, uh, well, that might be on odd sports. It is odd sports. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's just a, and I haven't seen it, so uh, well, I might have to put a test on that ticket in later. <laughs> but uh, there you go. So, uh, but yeah, just the, um, I don't know. Like, when you've won that race, too, just going back to that, so you've won that race, uh, you're in, uh, no doubt, a Hobart pub. Sitting there, Shepard Arms Customs House, the usual Customs suspects. House. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> how long? How, like I know now when they come in, Ed, and 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 to you, Dave. I tell you, they they come in now. The the big yachties, the ones that got the big billion dollar boats, they come in, they win the race, they take off. Yeah. Is that? I mean, is that obviously it's a, it's a big a big. Uh, Money sport, professional, all that, but yep. professional sport. But for the guys that have got the smaller boats, they got to get back. How long do you normally hang around? I know there's the King of the Derwent. Uh, yeah, that's on the second, is, is second everyone, of January. Is, is, yeah. is everyone when they after you finish the big race? Is everyone meant to be doing that, or there's a certain boats that they say, well, they're too big or whatever. They they don't do that or. And yeah, does that work? And, and is the trip home yeah. as stressful as the yes. trip? Yes, and what's the trip down? like going back? Can be, can be. Yeah. Um, well, so I mean, have a go. Yeah. But <laughs> being from <laughs> being from Hobart, you don't have to go back. We don't have to go back. <laughs> exactly. No. But you exactly. I mean, yeah, we have to do the trip up and yeah. 
I mean, different people have different views on that. Me personally, I'd rather get the boat to Sydney, pack it away, come home, have Christmas with the family, yeah. and then we fly, fly back up on Christmas Day for yep. the race. Yep. But other people who have a bit more time on their hands prior to Christmas might want to take a bit of time to get, get up there. I think the ones that go back to Sydney after the race, they um, years ago there used to be a thing in Triabunna mm. called yeah. the Crayfish, crayfish Derby. Derby. It was a crayfish crayfish Derby. And, and it, was a, it was an event designed for people leaving after the Sydney Hobart as they're heading back to Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah. Okay. And they go up the East Coast, they call in the Triabunna and they just have a big piss up. Yeah. And they called it the Crayfish Derby. So there was all these race race great racing yachts racing on the yeah. bay. Um, out in front of Tribunner and Orford, and then they go and get on the piss that night. And it was a great thing for the local yeah, community, and, and yeah, then they continue on their way. Up back the coast. Back That's all but that sort of thing back. doesn't happen yeah. anymore. Yeah. And yeah. you're right, there's a lot of professional crews, and they just finish the race, get on the boat, yeah. get on the plane, and go off to their next race yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. And there's quite a lot of opportunity, which is good for, or well, like young people or relatively inexperienced people, to do delivery trips. If they go down to the wharf mm -hmm. and hang around and ask a few questions, they can get the opportunity to go on a boat from here back to Sydney oh, as a yeah. delivery crew. Yeah. Okay. And they will quite often take... Which is crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not from what I've seen. <laughs> I, I, think I'll, I think I'll have to get day-to-day work and uh, overtime later. <laughs> Anyone out there? Yeah. Put your hand up. <laughs> it, might yeah. take, it might take two years to get back. That's our, that's our flat. I'll, I'll, go for, I'll go for a run out, out here in the Delta. So let's talk about that. What if, if there's someone out there who wants to get involved with sailing and, and obviously can't... <laughs> afford their own their own yacht. Yeah. What do they do? Yeah, they, what do they do? Yeah. How do they get involved in well, the sport? From from my point of view as an owner, just turn up early in the season, say I'm keen, and keep turning up. There's nothing an owner hates more than somebody who commits and doesn't show up because yep. it's like any it's like playing any game of footy. Yeah. If you haven't got your full team there, you you're You've got to have everyone there to, to, yep. to win the to win the event. Yep. So turn up early and just keep turning up and if you say you're gonna be there on time, be there on time. And really, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just keep doing. It. Obviously, you have to be reasonably good, but from from my point of view, the main thing is commitment. You yeah. can learn. I mean, yeah. you can learn. You yeah. can. You know, we can teach people how to sail. Yeah. yeah the, that, the that's clubs, what I was going to say. Yeah, they're yeah, exactly the, right. The clubs, that, that, that part with the club. What happens? Yeah, they, all the clubs in Hobart have a list of. Um, mm, if you want to learn to sail, you just go along to the club and say, "Look, I want to learn to sail. Can you get me on a boat?" Right. And quite often they'll they'll get you on boats in twilight races, yep. which are less serious, like Wednesday, Thursday afternoons, and you go and sail. I mean, we race reasonably competitively, but it's yep. not sheep stations or anything no, like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's oh, quite quite like right sailing, but you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's opportunities through the clubs, and the clubs will put you in touch with the boat owner. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then once you get on a boat, it's up to you how you how you take it from there. Cool. We've just had a, another just captain turn up. Yeah, he, uh, he's, he's ready for Cleve's uh, tips. Not captain, on yet, Rob. Captain uh, I know you want to win a million dollars. Good to have you on, mate. I haven't got me tips um, yet, really. <laughs> so, right. Talking about fun, prize money for winning the Sydney Dover is, is good money? No, there is none. There is none. It's, it's none. a crazy game. It's, it's just, the, just the press, the honour of winning it, I suppose. You win a watch. Yeah, you do get a watch, yeah. You, you get a Rolex, Rolex watch, which is a huge amount of money, I suppose. But... Uh, yeah, but yeah, is uh, that a huge value. No, just the uh, just the owner, the right? owner, wow. uh, and, and handicap. So first over the line gets it, and first on Tattersall's Cup, which is the true winner, also gets gets it. There was one year when Kodak, a long while ago, Kodak were the sponsors, and they, I think it was ten thousand bucks, maybe twenty thousand bucks was given to the winner. Uh, but it was just one year, it went off, and that's. But it doesn't since. deter anyone from from going in the race. Not no, not it's not about the, about the money. It's a horrible investment decision buying a boat. I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. It's fun. It's, it, believe me, it's fun. It's it, not not always it, bad. It's some beautiful weather do, as well. Do, we, we don't talk about how much things cost, uh, but I, I would like to know when things do go wrong, like with with the sails and all that. Just say, like a sail, for instance. You know, with the uh, you know, um, how much on your boat? Say on the on the Rambler with something like once you once you do a sail, it rips. Like well, the main was the most expensive sale, and that's about um, ten thousand dollars new. Wow. Mm. Um, and they last two two seasons, hopefully. If you're racing seriously, wow. two so seasons should, should hopefully last. So, 
Yeah, um, then there's spinnakers and there's head saws, which cost less, but the, the main saw is the big one. I, I had sponsorship with AFR, so I got a plug in. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 go for it. <laughs> so, who was it again, mate? AFR. AFR, the, uh, there you Australian go. Australian Financial Review. Yeah, I've been listening. I don't, but uh, <laughs> Ed does. So, uh, <laughs> got on AFR. <laughs> Financial Review newspaper for 16 there years, and that and it, uh, without them, I wouldn't have been up, myself and the one or two partners I had over those years in buying these boats. Yeah. Couldn't have competed, it was just too expensive. Yeah. So they made it happen for us, really. Ah, that's great. Mm. Well, there you go. So, as you say, tough time for pirates with all these X marks on the ground now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's, our, he's our local comedian, yeah, yeah, old yeah, Captain yeah. Fetishy, <laughs> all the X for COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Well, yeah. guys, I'm, um, I can sit here and talk to you absolutely all night. And I'm, I'm yeah, well, I've learned. I've learned a lot more than I ever, than I ever knew well. about uh, about racing, but uh, perhaps uh, instead of us just going down to the club next time, mate, uh, just having a beer like we like to. Yes. Perhaps uh, well, we, do. we should Come go out on one of those Wednesday well, nights. Been just, one, uh, so. Mate, you're more than welcome. Mm. Uh, yeah, tell yeah, us. Well, well, have a little, let's, little, let's little, little roll in. around the door. Yeah, yeah. Lock it in. We'll lock it in. We'll film some frothy while we're out there. You're going to do what? We'll, 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 we'll film some frothy water out there. So there you go. The boys might, might put us in. overboard. Out, 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 we'll, out, we'll, we'll, you know, you're going to hang around for the rest of the show, aren't you? We'll talk a bit of sports and yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You fill up your beers. Um, outside of that, the strangest thing that's happened to, to you, just, just as no, we finish, right. in, in the city in the Hobart. One of the weirdest things has happened. Australia's you're sick. Bloody hell. Uh, uh, birds, birds cracked on your head or you bloody <laughs> seen a tornado or... You haven't seen any Mako uh, sharks like the other day yeah, jumping, jumping out, out of the water. Jumping out of the water. Someone, uh, another competitor had a fishing rod. a whale. <laughs> no whales. I, see, I can think back to all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'll put you on the spot, sorry. Uh, no. Whales, whales has been an issue. We almost one of them came right up in front of us. A big bloody whale, big southern right, I think it was. Southern yes. right whale. Surface right in front of us, and we we're flying along. Jesus, what's that? Oh no! <laughs> and we, and we sort of glanced him and went around. Him oh really? Hit him and glanced him, and he went back down again. But so that was pretty scary. He just oh, really? made, he just surfaced literally out of nowhere, bang! Right that's, in front of us. that's a good one. I just, I just mm. got one question. Yeah. Always so what did you? Know, when, yeah, when you, you got any when you, when hang, on, oh, hang on. Yeah, I had, had sorry. a. Oh, Dave, sorry. Sorry, mate. I'll have another beer, mate. I'll yeah. make you oh, that's all right. Go. Here, yeah, create a bit of a story and I won't take too long. But um, no, you get the form, mate. Yeah, so you want. We talked. Um, well, I mean, we were talking before about Tasman Island, and and one of the things in the race that that you get to know. I mean, it, particularly as navigator, but everybody on the on the crew would know is the lighthouses along the way. And Tasman Island's one, which you can see from a long way out, and the other one, um, pretty important to us people from Hobart, is the Iron Pot, the Iron Pot um, yeah. which obviously marks the entrance to the river. Yep. Now, Sydney Hobart races are often won and lost in the river, and you can race for 620 miles, neck and neck, but as soon as you get to the river, then it can have a big so bearing be, on the so outcome of the race. It could be a standstill like it is sometimes. Well, yeah, the, there's a but big problem with the nothing, race. Is it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That you've got to get to Tasman Island by about three o'clock in the afternoon. Right. So that you get to the Iron Pot by about eight or nine o'clock at night. Okay. Because if yep. you get there after nine o'clock at night, around nine, ten o'clock, the river just shuts down. There's no wind in the river. And a lot of people have found this over the years. And, and I certainly have. Yeah, yeah, there was well, we've watched it. I mean, I've just been told it's a terrible, yeah, terrible many ball. Times <laughs> on the one side, the one's right over on the droopy point side, one's over on the, the, the bay side. But there's nothing, is it? Just nothing. No, no, and, and this one, one year we did this race in 2004. And, and from. We, we got to the Iron Pot and it was about 9 o'clock at night. The sea breeze mm. had died out and there was no wind. And we'd creep forward 100 metres and then drift back a hundred oh, metres. No. Yeah. And anyway, oh, no. sitting on the, the point at um, down off South Arm, there was a big roaring bonfire going. And we could see these blokes sitting around the fire <laughs> having a beer. And anyway, we, we sat there That's for about six bad. hours. <laughs> six hours going uh, nowhere. Nowhere, still watching. <laughs> and a couple of days after the race, we were having a barbecue with some friends and I was talking to this mate of mine and I said, yeah, we were talking about the Sydney Hobart and we were sitting off just past the iron pot and saw these people sitting on the shore having a beer and I said I could have swum ashore, had a few beers, swam back out to the boat and continued <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> and this fellow said, yeah, we, I was sitting on the shore at South Arm, watching this bloke go nowhere, this boat going nowhere. He said, I could have oh, rowed out in the oh, no. took a beer out of them, 
they could have had a beer, we could have had a chat, we could have rode ashore because they sat there for about six hours without moving. Oh, movie. wow. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, that, that was us. That yeah. was you guys. Oh, very yeah. trusting. And it was New Year's Eve too. Oh. Wow. Just, very slow just, race. Just quickly, yeah. the one yeah. thing that I don't know with yachting too, it, it, when, you, <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the boat's yeah. over on the side and you are all over, like, you know, when, when you tack and you, 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 you know, you probably sail swung round and you, you ride over it and you, does your back, is it almost in the water, is it? Or, or you're under the water or you're just above the water? You know what I'm saying? When you're tacking, you, everyone goes to one side. And you actually more, change sides. So yeah, you change, change sides. Side yeah, but, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. Are you getting wet? Like, I mean, not just spray. No. If, you, if you're slow enough, you do, but you've got to be fast. You've got to get on the high side of the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, like yeah, often in the, in, in the Wednesday races, people that come out don't understand that and they stay there for too long. And they get dunked, so they only you know, do it once, and they move faster next time. So yeah. when you're on the side of the boat like that, though, are you are you just what are you hanging on to? Nothing. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's there's lifelines on the side of the boat. So okay, all so boats, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so all when you, boats when have to hang wire around okay, the boat. Okay, so you are holding, which stops you from falling over. Yeah. Are you oh, on the outside of those or on, or on the inside? You're leaning ah, against Ah, so that's what yeah. I didn't... Uh, yeah, you're on the inside no, of the boat. I didn't get that. Yeah. And there's okay. rules about where you can position your body in a race. Right. And you can't have okay. your full body outside the wire. There you so. go. So I didn't notice that. Did you? Mm. I didn't notice that. Good point. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. So that's, that's well, for yeah, the viewers there. The, the lifelines have saved a lot of people from going over. Mm. There you go. Uh, it's funny, back in the 50s, my old man, that there, there never used to be lifelines on the boat. And it's funny how the world changes, but, but my old man says back in the day you were you were called a sissy if you had lifelines. What are you? Are you a, are you a man or a sissy? <laughs> really? <laughs> these bloody lifelines. These oh lifelines. Oh my lifelines. God. Seriously. That's funny how the world changes. Well, Ed, Ed, Andrew, mate, we can't thank you enough. Yeah, and, no, uh, thanks, boys. And I think everyone's been watching has absolutely enjoyed uh, everything that you guys have spoken about tonight. We can't thank you enough because that's uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it takes uh, a hell of a lot of brains and a hell of a lot of guts. To be a, Not uh, many brains, I think. But <laughs> you guys, I'll, I'll say it again. You, you guys seem like really, really, you know, nice guys and, and you know, pretty smart, but I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Well, you'll have to come out one day with us and. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I will. I will. Yeah. I don't you know they'll set us up, though, for now. <laughs> you realise that, don't you? We'll be set up. It'll be a gnarly <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> for sure. No, we'd love, love to. We'd love no, to. no, love we, to we will. We'll we will come out there. We'll have to. Yeah, uh, well, now, we're going to have to have a quick break because we've got a, a sponsor to talk about, and then we've got. Oh, Rob, you'll have to watch the the um, the whole show, mate, because these guys have taken us through some amazing stories yeah. and um, a bit of footage to put up. So, so I know you've missed the start, mate, but uh, get on it and watch it, and uh, you'll absolutely love it. It's a dry boat, yes. Um, yeah, so we've got a sponsor. We've, we've got to have a quick break, guys. We've got a sponsor that we've got to put an ad up for, and then we're going to do Odd Sports, and I've got to have a quick break myself. So <laughs> I think we're all going. So we're all leaving. So one, hang, after, one after the other, isn't hang, it? Yeah, hang yeah, around, guys. Much. Stay here for the rest of the show. We've got uh, a little bit of sports news. We've got a trivia competition we're doing, and uh, this is Odd Sports in Corey's Garden Corey's Landscaping. Garden's Thanks, we Corey. Go. We'll be back in just a minute, guys. <laughs> In Odd Sports this week, we revisit diving, although this makes death diving look like a dip in the pool over a Sunday barbecue. I almost hypoxy from holding my breath as I was researching the footage. Tonight's odd sport is cliff jumping, but before we get to that, I want to introduce you to Charles and Rick. Now Charles and Rick were dive board nuts, not content with the height of splash with their platforms at the local Olympic, or even splash made jumping cliffs. They woke up one day and thought, this is all crap, what we want to do is climb a metal tower as high as we possibly can, stand on a piece of board no bigger than our feet and line ourselves up with a puddle of water. That'll make a good bloody splatter. What's your, uh, what's your feeling? Are you going to do it or are you, you going to walk down? Oh no, I'm going to do it. No doubt, huh? No doubt.
collision zone right at about 100 feet, and all of a sudden I was in the water. So I really didn't get a chance to tighten up and to uh, enter the water the way I wanted to. But fortunately, uh, I've been training physically uh, very, very hard, and I was able to withhold the impact. Took yeah, a shot, you really did take a shot. Then everyone thought, this looks like a sport that could catch on. Let us join you. At 52.2 metres, these weren't even the highest attempts. That victory goes to Lasso Shala, who dived a suicidal 58.8 metres off a cliff. He survived but didn't look too flash getting out of the water. In fact, many have fractured backs and legs, often needing assistance to get out of the water. And that brings me to the championships of cliff diving. There's a cult of these people wanting the bone crushing feeling of hitting the water at speed. And they are still wearing speedos and bikinis. I might add, they must have glutes tighter than Superman's crutch. Bloody hell, I dive off the three meter at the Parks Olympic back in the 80s and nearly tore a new one. This is a Red Bull event and the dizzying height of the platform is a vertigo dream. Two platforms for the men and the ladies. Men go higher because of their egos and bragging rights. And don't be fooled, it isn't a standard jump. They perform different degrees of technical difficulty to earn points. Hovering in the water below, circling like a bunch of white sharks, are a mass of scuba divers ready to pluck you out should you screw up. What was interesting during my research is that Wiki states that the impact associated with high diving could have negative effects on the joints and muscles of athletes. Well no shit Sherlock. To avoid injury to their arms upon impact with the water, divers from significant heights may enter the water feet first because no one wants a head lodged in their ass, much like a bug hitting your windscreen. Not a sport for acrophobics, basophobics or la pelle du vide, but an exciting one to watch. And that fuck of yours is Odd Sports for this week. <laughs>
uh, Jordan de Gowie. Yeah. I call it de Gowie. You yeah. could call it de Gowie if you want. Yeah, yeah. Gowie. Yeah. yeah. But he uh, he kicked five and uh, only heard uh, before I came over tonight that uh, he could be out for ten weeks. Actually got his finger caught in uh, in a jumper there towards the end of the game yep. and uh, done a. There was some damage there, mate, so he could be out for quite a while. Could be out for the year. Yeah, sure. So there's a bit of news, uh, breaking news. What do you guys think about the whole AFL rugby league? You're jumping from state to state, you know, to try and keep it running. You, you think it's a goal? You reckon we'll get through to the end of the season? What do you mean, Eddie? Yeah, personally, I, I mean, I think it's a good thing that they are playing because there's so many things being cancelled. It's good to have some entertainment. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I think they're doing a fantastic oh, job. I love watching All footy. Cards. I love watching rugby league. Yeah, and, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, if they can keep the entertainment job. going, it's a good thing. Yep. There's some hope, doesn't it? A bit of hope in, yeah. the, in a you know, shitty environment. Yeah. Part of the French. Well, yeah. no, they're, they're right. I reckon they're doing a fantastic job. They're, um, yeah, they're at risk too. The, the players, they're getting, as they said, they're all getting tested every five yeah. seconds. And I'm sure so they're probably eighteen it. times a, a week, which we don't that, hear about. They're fed up uh, with it, no doubt, but they're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I don't. What are the rugby league boys doing? Are they uh, all heading north to Queensland too? Is that um, anything eventuated? Do you know or not? Not I yet. Not yes. Yeah. Yeah. But New South Wales, the way it's but heading, that could it, you it know, could, it may could happen. It's potential to do it. They have boarding restrictions in New South Wales that that they're only allowed to go between the club and their home. Oh, okay. They can't go anywhere else other than their club or their home. Yeah, oh, fair enough. But well, look, I, no I, bars, I, I, no cafes. No they're talking coffee. about putting the uh, the border in Queensland. They're talking about uh, putting up a um, the line there right, right at Tweed Edge too. I think. Mm. You're a knob. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Hey, sorry, oh, a good chance a Gold Coast based tram oh, no, will win the AFL this year. Here. Rob's, uh, uh, yes, Rob loves his, he his, he his, loves his rugby, he his league. Who's he going for? He's, he's a Bulldog. He's a Bulldog. Yeah, no, Canterbury like Bulldogs. Yet, Canterbury Bulldogs. Yeah. Canterbury yeah. Bulldogs. Yeah. Bulldogs. Well, they've yeah. lost their coach, haven't they, this week? Dean Pay, is that right? Is that, oh, is that Canterbury so. Bulldogs, yeah, yeah, Rob? So. Is that right? You've lost your yeah. coach, and I think Trent, Trent Barrett is now your new coach of Fon. If I'm not wrong, I probably am. Um, the other thing I want to quickly throw in is our mate, Jeff Horn. Oh, actually, I was watching, uh, I, I commented, about, well, commented to you earlier, I was watching a uh, fight uh, mm. early when he was um, getting uh, punched around a little bit, mate. Mm. Uh, I was a rafa. Yes. And he, he won that fight. Yep. And uh, I watched a bit on Zoo. And as you commented a couple of weeks ago, uh, his trainer. Um, Dundee. Dundee, Jeffrey. yes, he, he jumped ship. Uh, he's, not, he's not too happy about it, is he? He's not too happy about it, old Jeff. No. So uh, I wonder, is that still going on? Mate, either? they've set a date. It's going to oh, be at, at Townsville's, uh, Townsville Stadium, Townsville. Country Bank Stadium on Wednesday, August 26th. So neutral territory. Yeah. Because he's a Bris Vegas. Yeah, player. they're still Queensland, so they're going to be going for Jeff Horn. So you guys oh, watch oh. the fights, you get into that? I do a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had... We had Jeff on, on our show, uh, 20, 26th of August. Oh, okay. um, just, you know, an ambassador for bullying and... and well, he was. He was bullied as a, as a kid yeah. and uh, took up boxing and uh, I think he's been fantastic. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, it's it's not a bad yeah. thing and, yep. you know, it happened a lot in schools. And He just went to get a bit of self-defence after being beaten, you know, or, or you know, bullied at school and yeah, he, he, was, he was good at it. So, mm. Mm. mate, one more thing. Um... We won't go too much into this because it's politics and we don't do that in our show. Nah. Um, nah. The Washington Redskins gridiron team. Changing, no, I don't agree with it. Changing the name. <laughs> yeah. No, changing the name. I don't agree name. with it. No, no. Big ball. It's not because it's red. Uh, it no, they were going to change field. the Canterbury Crusaders over in New Zealand really? you know, up after the big uh, Muslim massacre yeah. that happened over there. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Canterbury has always been the, the, called the Crusaders and the, and the Crusaders used to fight against you know, the, the Crusades and yeah. it didn't happen in the end yeah. and my view is, look, it's sport. It, it's, it's not meant to hurt it's, anyone. It's, 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 uh, it's a sport, yeah. The Redskins are called the Redskins. What, what, anyway. Well, the ended up changing the names yeah. of the Wallies. I mean, if you, if you go back, yeah. you'd have to go back through history. If they, if they, keep, if they, go, if they go with that, how much are they going to charge? Kerry doesn't agree either. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think it's gone too far. I they, they, go the, the whole story mm. was about um, uh, about uh, you know what happened to the uh, fella over there in America. Yes. And a lot of the guys that were interviewed, being gridiron players and all that, they were saying that it shouldn't be charged. 
Mm. Right? So yeah. there's your answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What there's your answer. Too? Imagine the cost involved in that club. Oh, the whole marketing. Yeah, right? yeah everything. Yeah, so, so your marketing, yeah. everything else has changed. It's, it's like lot. saying you've got a boat, you've got to, you've got to call it the uh, Titanic. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. let's, let's get this quiz going, eh? It's, quiz, it's quiz time. Oh, trivia, geez. trivia, hang trivia. On hang on a second. Hang on I a second. I did realise we were doing, doing a quiz. 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 Oh, are we doing the quiz? No, you can ask some questions. Yeah, we'll trace the questions. Um, guys, just to let you know, this is where we're running at the moment. Uh, we're round seven tonight, and at the moment, Ben Presnell is in uh, Tasmania is on 14. Natalie Arnold from the Gold Coast is on 11. Razor Ray's on seven from the Gold Coast. Captain Rob from the Gold Coast. A lot of Gold Coast. There's a lot of Gold Coast, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, well, they, because they're going to host the... AFL Grand Final, aren't they? The Ray's, oh, no. the Ray's a Ray's not a footy umpire, is it? No, 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 Ray's a Ray's. No, 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 Ray's a Ray's. She's a New Zealander Ray's. She's a New Zealander warrior. Ray's a Ray is currently at the V8 yeah. Supercars in Sydney, so yeah. she works for V8 Supercars, which we're going to be talking to very soon. Um, I've, I haven't even sorted these, so sorry about that. Ray's, uh, Captain Rob is in third on ninth, then Natalie Arnold, uh, Greg from Queensland's on five. Sorry, Kerry, you're on six. I've got this all over the place. Juanita's on four from WA. The Don's on two. We're not going to see the Don for a while. No, the Don's working working now. He's working in Victoria. He's going to do things at work at night. So... uh, so we, we've lost a few. Well, uh, let's com- let's get one of the guys here to answer uh, to ask the first the first question. What do you well, think of that? Well, can. There you go. Got your dice. So yeah. how this how this works, guys? If you're new to the show, basically it's uh, it's t- it's eleven questions. There's ten questions of trivia. The eleventh question is is a, it's a pick a face. It's here, um, and you get to spin the wheel. Corey's garden oh, wheel. Love to win the a wheel. prize. Yeah, spin the wheel. <laughs> Um, we roll the dice and we look for that particular number well, to be the right answer. I, look, let's, easy, let's, let's just go straight into uh, Corey's uh, guarding uh, pub quiz. Who's home but uh, we're going to get Andrew to. Andrew, uh, where are you I going? reckon this is, uh, this is right down his alley there. It is. It Question is. Question one there, Andrew. Shoot. How many Sydney to Hobart's? Has wild oats eleven one. Ooh. Ooh. We're looking for. Oh, oh no! no. no. That's it. never happened before. Oh, That's a three. No, three. midnight three. rambler. It's, it's a three. 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 It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> How many Sydney to Hobart's has wild oats eleven one? Guys, we're looking for number three. No, it's not four, Rob. All right. No, it's not one, Rob. <laughs> no, it's not the Titanic, Rob. <laughs> I how like, many? I like that Rob's so committed. How many <laughs> Sydney to Hobart's has everyone's Googling at the moment? So Do you know it? No, it's not five. Titanic. It's actually a trick question. No, it's not three. It's not five. It's, it's not three. It's not three. It's not three. It's it's more than five. It's probably only one, is it? Actually, or is it? What's the answer? I thought it was that many. It it depends whether you're talking line on as a handicap. Is it handicap? Because the true winner is handicap. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, I've missed the. Hang on, no, no, uh, one, no, no, yeah. Oh, sorry. One, two, three. Benny Presnell. Yeah. Nine is correct. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Is it nine? Yes. Yeah, Benny Jeez. Presnell's got it. Well, unless Google's lying to me. Are we right, yeah, fellas? No, no, no. Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> we could be wrong. <laughs> how many first wild oats? The winner. How many? <laughs> how many wild oats has got? Uh, that, how many times uh, have they yeah. come in first? Second is the answer for that. Uh, so, sorry, twi- two twice. Mm. They, they, they won the thing twice on handicap. That's overall. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Overall. And the so other stuff is perhaps just have wording. I'd, I'd love to sit here and talk to you guys about handicaps and how they work, but we don't have time tonight. Yeah. So, well, yeah. there's a handicap. You might have to come back. <laughs> people, people, people will want a uh, handicap Brent, on your next question. Brent's having a, a crap attack because he reckons that Google's pre- Google Presnell is calling. Google, Google Presnell. Presnell. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's one. Here's 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 a question that I'm going to do because. Someone's not watching tonight. Ah, he's right. not watching now because he didn't come. He calls himself. Well, question number two, guys. Who had a batting average of 99.94 and was bowled out for a duck in his last match? We're looking for number six. six. And the reason we do this is because so, we've got a guy on the show who actually calls himself uh, the, the Don. And One, and answered every two, question in the whole quiz. three, four... <laughs> Five, six, it's Kerry. Kerry. It's Kerry, well done, yeah, Kerry. Nice work, Kerry. <laughs> so he answers everything. We actually met him on a cruise, and the reason we met him, we were having drinks in a bar, 
and uh, his name's Love Craig, us. and he's just yelling out in a quiz, Don Bradman. Don Bradman. <laughs> Every <laughs> answer. Don Bradman. So, so ever Don since Don Bradman. we call him Don, Don Bradman. <laughs> well done, Kerry. You got so the when, right. we, when we're doing our questions here, it's usually the Don. Let's Where you go, Glenny? Question number three. Oh, okay, question three. In what state dash territory was the highest Twin. recorded temperature of 53 degrees Celsius 53. recorded? What state what state territory state. was that? Mm. Oh, that was just recently. Yeah. What state was the highest recorded temperature of 53 degrees? We're looking for number four. Yeah. Have to be no, but yeah, nice yeah. work. Yeah. Northern Cherry, yeah. no, yeah. WA, yeah. no. Really One. One. What was the thing? He will be spewing his miss that. Two, three. But, oh, look, he's all over it. He's done it again. He's done it again, Mr. Google. Yeah, many Fresnel. He's what got it. Get? He's all over it. Queens, Queens, Queensland, Queensland. Queensland. Oh, Fifty-three oh. degrees. That's oh, just that crazy shit Isaac? right there. Oh, Ed, question number four. Try it Ooh, over there. Yeah. Uh, question four, Mary. <clears throat> Who is the lead singer of Silverchair? Oh. Oh, these are these are all Australian questions tonight, by the way. Nice work, Jeff. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't go to the Patreon. What do you say? I know they are. Breathing through a hole in the They're actually very good. Oh, shit. Where's the dice? Up there, the dice. Roll the dice. Oh, that's what's that? That's bad, isn't it? One to one. One. Mr. Copy Paste. That's Australia. Matthew Johns, Dan Johns. Oh, I wouldn't take that. The captain. Oh, Matthew Johns. Dan Johns, Daniel Johns. Yeah, Dan. Daniel yeah, Dan. Yes, well that's done. it. No, well done. Well done. Daniel well done. Jones. Well done. Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. Who wants to go next? Well, this is another yacht. Yeah, it's, it's another yacht. It's another question, yachty it? one. So is that yachts? Question, I don't oh, know. So it's a ship. <laughs> it's a ship. <laughs> this is this is one that the boys would love to be. It's, it's sort of a yacht. Question five there, mate. <laughs> not the Titanic. <laughs> no, it's not the Titanic. It's not the Titanic, <laughs> but it's close. Question number five. <laughs> How many ships were in the first fleet? <laughs> Oh. How many ships yeah. in the first fleet? Oh. Oh. First. There you go. Roll the dice. <laughs> They're not yachts, the are they? I, don't know. I didn't write the questions. Roll the dice, mate. Do I? Oh, do you know what you're doing? Thanks. Yeah. What is the fleet? Five. Five. Thanks. No, it's all right, mate. Thanks. Oh, here we go. One, I like to be alive. Two. Fall asleep in the eye. <laughs> We've got two. We've got two. Everyone's saying seven. It's not, seven. it's not seven. It's not. Oh, even Benny Presnell, he's, he's out. Everyone's he's got two. Not good. Does no, it good. include oh, the one oh, Jeff was on? I was. I'm a first fleeter. Thanks for asking there, Brent. Come on, guys. It's not seven. Google it. Were you on the first fleet, Jeff? Yeah. 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 My family was. Oh, now. Oh, oh, oh here we go. Hang so on. I'm going to have to go back. That's mine. Yeah. Avery. Yeah. 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 One, yeah. two. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, two. One, one was a McDonald's, a Scottish two. plate called McDonald's. Three, four, uh, five. It's Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. McDonald's and McMahon. Kerry, yeah. correct. Yeah. It's 11. 11 both sides. 11, that's right. Yeah, well, I was on the Mayfair, I think. Was the Mayfair? On the Scar no, Scarborough. Scarborough. The Scarborough. I was in Scarborough. Maybe well, I was on the Mayfair. I don't know. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was on the book. Yeah, I was on it. Lady Lady Well done, everyone. Mayfair, didn't that go to America? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Jess and Christopher Columbus, he's over Took a left turn something. Just They got lost. It was like it was like the nineteen ninety eight Sydney Dome but in the first fleet and they were coming no, up and all of a sudden <laughs> Some of them had to <laughs> bloody get out of there and. Yeah. You got that one, Jeff? Oh, Rob, go for it. Uh, that was Kerry. That was Kerry. Kerry, okay. well done. Well go done. further, Rob. Uh, Rob uh, I don't know if anyone's going to. Oh, I know you did, Rob. You got the first two, mate, but we were looking for five. I started with 11 kids. <laughs> I started with 11 kids, and I know. Yes, you did. You did, Rob. You did start with 11. Well done. All right. Question six. Do you reckon anyone will remember this, this person? Uh, Give it a crack. Have a go. Yeah. Well, yes, I would. Okay. Uh, the boys will, we? Yeah. Here we go. We're all in the same year. Do, it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Right. Oh, was it? Oh, sure. 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 sorry. Yeah. Why can't I do this? Question six. Well, all right. I'll be out of turn. Question number six. <laughs> Who won consecutive gold logies from 1997, which is a year before you won? The yeah. Ah, oh, well, that's, that's a good year. That, well, I'll remember this now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who won consecutive gold logies from 1997 to the year 2000? What? Merv Hughes, no. No, it wasn't. Oh, it, do we got to roll the dice? Why don't you just tell everyone? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Roll the dice, man. Roll the dice. It wasn't Bert Newton. It's five. five. It's five. It's five. Who won consecutive gold logies from 97 to 2000? 
Okay. okay. I'll wow. see if I can keep up. Oh, this. that's what I mean. Should I tell you it's a female? Okay. Oh, it's oh, not Kerry and Kenny. Shut up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Waleed. Waleed, no. Kate Ritchie, no. Lisa no. Tough oh, who's that? Oh, Lisa McNeil. Oh, Ray Martin. Yeah. Lisa. See, I would have thought Ray Martin. Yeah, we'll take that. No, no we won't. No, yeah, no, we won't. No, we won't. No, no, he's no. trying to spell it. Oh, is he? Yeah, one, oh, two. Oh. I'm doing it. Three. That's a bit he's won. Well, no, he hasn't. Oh, oh, he hasn't. Liz has got Liz. in. Lizzie. <laughs> well done, Liz. Liz from the Sydney Swans. Oh, you get? Lisa Lisa Glenn. Really so, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> Glenn's talking up his football career saying he played. Uh, no, no, hey. hey, you, no, she yeah, you were on the wing there, there weren't you? With Paul <laughs> Kelly or something? John Woods took, like. Well done, uh, well done, uh, Liz, Lizzie, 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 Lisa right. McEwing, guys, Lisa McEwing. <laughs> okay, this is, well, Jerry, we eh? might actually hear this one over. Oh, we're going again. Yeah. Yes. Um, question bit. seven, because you'll know this. Oh, you would. Seven. You would. You're a New South Wales man. Which is the second largest city in New South Wales? And there we go. Oh. There you go. Oh, there which is the largest city? Oh, dice. Well, sorry, dice. Yeah, the second dice. largest city. Second That's largest zero. city. Eight. Guys, second largest city. Shh. <laughs> Get one. What, what was the one? What did yeah, you throw? Eight. eight. Two. Two. Sorry, guys. This won't take long. Yeah. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven. Eight. Rob, the captain again. Uh, Cappuccino, yes, he's done it. Cappuccino. 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 Yeah, yeah, well done. No, the Gong, no, Newcastle. No, Newcastle. Newcastle. Newcastle, Newcastle. Newcastle oh, is the yeah. answer. It's all right, I got it, I fixed it. Oh, did you put up Wollongong? I put the Gong and then I changed it to Newcastle. So you, I'll give you the bloody Gong in a minute, let me tell you. <laughs> Question eight, Jeffy. Is, is that what we got, mate? Yep. Okay, multiple choice, guys. Thank you. Question number eight Australia holds the world record for which amazing feat? I don't know how amazing it is, but anyway, it's an amazing feat. Yeah, amazing a, feat. Who they belong to? Drinking beer. The <laughs> fastest <laughs> beer bottle opening. Yeah, beer bottle opening. B. The largest Christmas cracker. We saw one of those. You got place. <laughs> C. The most sheep sheared in 24 hours. Or D. The largest chicken dance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Roll with us. An interesting multiple choice. Australia <laughs> holds the world record. Uh, that's a big. six. Fastest beer bottle. Oh, hang on. They're we got all, a six. Going. We got a six. Yeah, Rob's six. just punching in letters of the alphabet. It's six. <laughs> it's six. <laughs> it's uh, six. Yeah. Okay, so one, two. Oh, there's so many. You'd think it'd be New Zealand, the, the, the sheep. Yes. <laughs> so. Two, three. I agree. Three. Everyone say yeah, it's C. It's not C. Before they shear. Mm. It's not C. <laughs> Not it's so. not C. Liz has gone to <laughs> Look, at the, Look at the amount of C's. Look at the amount of C's. It's not C's. It's, it's not D. It's not D. It's oh. not D. It's not A. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus Christ. It's B. Look out. <laughs> it's B. <laughs> They're still writing D's. Look at them all. It's B! Here come the B's, Jeff. Oh, they're oh, on it. Goodness. What, what did I say? Six. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five, six. That's Kerry again. Which one was B again? What was, what was B? What, what the was largest that? Christmas cracker. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. How would you remember that one? Hey, we, yeah. we are pretty good here in okay. Australia, aren't we? <laughs> oh, we are, mate. Uh, we're Very going, important stuff. We'll go into question nine. We're, B. We've, we've got a, uh, a tennis. Oh. Oh, the Don would know this. Oh, the Don's yeah, on yeah. Tennis question. Oh, the Don's, he's... Uh, actually, like Don. actually, I just want to let you know. Liz might know. The Don's not here because he's working. Juanita's not here. She's at an engagement party. Razor Ray's not here because she's working at the V8 Supercars. Um, oh, I can't remember. Hurry up, second half, the footy's on. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> who was the most recent... Who was the most recent Australian to win the men's singles title mm. at Wimbledon? Mm. Who was the most recent Australian mm. men's... Oh... Singles title at Wimbledon. Go oh, was on. He? One. I'm going to go for two. Two. Oh, come on. Come on, go for two. <laughs> Who? Go, come on. Who won Wimbledon? No, it's not Patrick Rafa. Uh -huh. what, what was it? Two, was it? Two. One more. Pat Cash. No. Hewitt. Yeah, Nat. Natalie. Nat. 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 Get a Nat. You're on the board. Well 
Is that the first one on the board? Tonight? It is. It is well, the first one for that. Oh, Hewitt, of course. Ah, uh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Question 10, Jeffy. Okay, quickly. In which year was Vegemite first sold in Australia? <laughs> 1923, 1933, or 1943? When was Vegemite first sold in Australia? And we're going for number three. <laughs> 43 is post World War Two or during World War Two. That's it. Well, mm. Three. It's the captain. It's the captain. Rob. Well done, Rob. I can well tell done. you, it was 1923, guys, but it was actually made in 1922. But they released it into the shops in 23, so it was a year old before they released it. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a 10 year life, it's so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yes. Like <laughs> All right, let's get this cooking. Okay. The world. Andy, can you pass that uh, wheel up behind you, mate? We'll get this done well, very quickly, well, guys. We're so sorry to keep you excited. Keep I, I lost the half of it down the front. Love the wheel. Here we go. Okay. What a beauty. Thanks, Mark. Here we go. All right, guys. We don't need to say what's on there. No, we won't. We'll duck through that. So this is a... Uh... Rob, you don't like Vegemite, seriously. <laughs> no, we're this not going to worry. Well, he's not Australian, is he? <laughs> we're, no, we're not going to worry about what's on the wheel. We're just going to go. No, we're going to go. All right, hit the wheel. Question number 11, guys. Bonus to spin the wheel to get a prize. Uh, basically, we're going to put up a picture, and it's going to be a child actor. Uh, well, she's a, it's an actor who's... Yeah. Who's a child? Who anyway, was a yeah, child? Because we, we all started off as children. We did. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. We did. All right. It's an Australian person because it's an Australian thing. Can you chuck it up? Come on, we'll spin the wheel. Chuck it up. Spin all right, all right. Spin the wheel. All right, who is this? Who is this person? <laughs> chuck it up. It's on. Oh. And we're looking for number three. Four. That's not the person I put up. Four. No, I changed it because I didn't like yours. You idiot! <laughs> you, you, you can't do that! I can. <laughs> You're the boss. I produce. What's going on? Oh, no, why head. is it? It's, hang on a second. We're going for number four, by the way. But it's all coming up as... Hi, you can't say Nicole Kidman. Kate Ritchie, no. It is Nicole Kidman, and we've got one, two, three, four. It's Kerry. Kerry, is it? Kerry's got it. Kerry, nice you get to spin the wheel. First time ever ah, for Kerry to spin Kerry, oh, you've nice. got some fantastic prizes on the wheel tonight. Kerry, where do you want to start? You have got a frothy caller. You could have Cleve's personal tips, three. Oh, you'll be a millionaire. A BWS voucher, fishing DVD. Oh, wow. All right. Oh. I want, she wants a t-shirt. Start the t-shirt. Oh, t-shirt. Where are we? There, frothy t-shirt. Right. Oh, oh, frothy shirt. Here we go. Hang on. All right, blow out. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Go. Spin the wheel. <laughs> It's, oh, a it's, just, it's a key it's ring. It's a crappy key ring. Did you, you want to go again, Kerry? You can have the key ring or spin, spin again. again. Spin the wheel. <laughs> what are you going to go for? Come on, Kerry. <laughs> She wants to spin the wheel. Collingwood one. Spin again. Spin okay. again. Go. Okay. She wants a t-shirt. What's a t-shirt? Could be a long night. <laughs> no, it's only two. Oh, you are a frothy guest. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> frothy guest. Harry, you are coming on the wow. frothy You're as a guest. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. How's that? That's so it. we're going to get you on the frothy, Kerry, and we're going to talk to you about sports that you like, sports that you've played, maybe a little bit about your brother. And uh, yeah, hope that's all good with you because you've won <laughs> Frothy. Yes. Guys, well, frothy that was everywhere. trivia. Was We're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, you guys right for uh, five more minutes? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's okay. You've got to sit through Cleves too, so that's Oh, really God. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, no. no. Look, look at it. Look at it. Oh, no. no. What happened to that? Chief. First pause is always a bad pause, right? Tips? It is Cleef's tip. What the hell is happening that? That's uh, yeah, first right. four is always the bad four. It's time for uh, yeah. Cleef's tip. Yeah, it's crap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 I'm drinking. Right, oh, you are a guy. You're right to go. See you, Nat. Thanks for joining us. She doesn't like Cleef's tips. Um, <laughs> she knows horse racing. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, let's go. Cleef's tips. What's happening? We got the... Uh, we had that up there? It's already been gone. It's been gone. Sure. It's been gone. Okay. <laughs> okay, for all you viewers out there, uh, you know, we're just going along beautifully at the moment. We didn't do too bad last week. Uh, we're at Ipswich. And you have a go at me, Brent. <laughs> look, look, we've had a malfunction beyond the boat. We're at Ipswich, uh, Ramwick, Flemington and Morfordville. 
So we, we, you know, look, tipping's a little bit like that at the moment. We're a little bit countryfied at the moment. We have a few country horses. You've, you've got a lot there. Well, let's just jump into it then. <laughs> Ipswich uh, at 12.23, race <laughs> two, <laughs> horse six, Magoni, uh, 4.60 fixed. Race three, horse two, Allwood will be a Cleves tip. 6.40 and 4.80, that'll come in, of course. It won't be that. Uh, a really good one here. You like this, don't you, Jeff? Oh. Race six, horse three, love squirrels. Love squirrels. Love squirrels. So yeah. love six, squirrels. Six, six, six twenty on the uh, tote and uh, seven fixed. Uh, I actually nearly missed this. We're gonna we're gonna back up on this horse, Jeff. No, I'm not backing uh, up on any horse, mate. I can see you right now. Yeah, don't you probably get kicked and end up overboard, mate, on one of the yachts. But at four oh eight, race eight, horse one, stuttering. Uh, he won't start at this time. It came third uh, at, at Brisbane last week. It, it'll win this one, mate. Six fifty on the tape. Race nine, uh, horse four, Jammy Lady uh, will do well. Seven sixty and three twenty again. Have a look at those. Uh, they will come in. This is because it's the night before. So uh, get down at Ramwick. Probably stay away from Ramwick. It's overcast, heavy eight. Uh, 240 I've jumped to there race 6 and I do like Ramwick Ed by the way I, I normally back there but race 6 horse 4 hand spun will win there 240 on the tape race 7 horse 4 space boy your that's beers, probably where I've been when I've got that one down the front of me before mate 280 on your yeah, I, well, I, lucky, <laughs> lucky, <laughs> really come good. on come on do your bloody tips <laughs> How much more time we got? The boys want to go home. Ah, oh, no, no, sorry. Good. Race, oh, Flemington. Uh, <laughs> soft five at Flemington. Fine. Soft five again. It's fine in go. Melbourne. Soft five. It's fine. They've got, they've not go, it's not fine, but it's fine. Uh, race two, horse one, Sanson. 7.90 and five fixed. Race five, horse four, Al Faris. Will do well. Five on the tape. Four fixed. Race six, horse six, Smoke and Romans. <laughs> uh, you can't get him in Italian. Eight, eight ten. Chris, that'll come in. And eight dollars <laughs> fixed. Uh, race seven, uh, Cleve Stips, Siriconi, four and four. Race eight, horse seven, Miramar, Aren't which is in a two thousand uh, long distance. No, race. sorry, it's Miramax. Yeah, uh, yeah Miramar. Eleven sixty and five fifty. Race nine, horse seventeen. Uh, I think it's got Oliver on it. Pinion, six thirty and three thirty. Up at Muppetville. straight over to South Australia. Soft five, fine. Race one, horse two, sensitivity. Two fifty fixed. Are they gone to sleep yet? Well, they, no. One of them, uh, Rob just said, "I like you better, Glenn, when you don't do tips." Uh, <laughs> race three, horse two, Rothmore. <laughs> he doesn't know how to. He doesn't know how to put on a bet. He's, he's got Does the he? Zeds. money in it. He's got the Zeds going. Move on. I think. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Race four, horse four. Sign of. You might need a hand with that one. Was it? Ozuri. How do you pronounce that? Azuri. 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 You're yeah, picking the bloody you. horses. You no, might, I don't know what the... You might want to give Andrew a bit of a nudge there. I think he's falling asleep. Team. Team. Hey. <laughs> well, okay. Race race six, horse eight, left-hand man. Uh, there you go. There he is. 340 on the tape. And horse two, one of our favourites, Jeff, Beer Mid. Who? Well, Beer Mid. It's, beer it's Mid. It's a tad because it's... Yeah, in the bar, right? Eleven <laughs> uh, fixed, and then we finish with horse three, race eight, God's Penny. I, I That's close tips. Uh, salvage your house, buy a boat. You'll be able yeah. to do everything with this. You'll be able to be a yachtsman full time with the boys, and I'll be able to go out and uh, sail against Ed and uh, Andrew when I put all my tips on. I forgot. That's Thanks for tips. that. That's close I, tips. I, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not. The first time we've ever backed him, but I thought, dear. <laughs> this is more dangerous <laughs> than Rona. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for tonight. We have gone way over tonight. It's been a huge show, but uh, well worth wow. it, because it's probably one of the uh, the most interesting interviews that I've ever yeah. done on, on the it show. Is, and we've interviewed some good. amazing people, guys, and... Um, no, we've enjoyed it. All jokes aside, we have, have a little bit of a laugh on the uh, on the show. That'd be nice. We do good uh, fun. We do. Yeah. We've had a bit of fun with it, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully for the viewers and that sort of thing, that uh, they've enjoyed uh, the boys being on and, and learning a little bit more about yeah, about uh, the serious side of uh, yachting, mate, My because word. it is a serious sport. And uh, yeah, so if you want to you want to get into it, get down to your local sailing club and uh, yeah. Yeah, happy sailing. Come out for a sail. Yeah, Come out for a sail. Yeah, we're, we're coming down, aren't we? Oh, yeah. The Late beers night. will be cold. <laughs> Icy cold, ready to go. Icy cold, ready to go. So, guys, thank you.
Ed, thank you, Andrew. Thank yeah, you so much. No, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we didn't mention New Tech last night. Yeah, new no, Tech class. Ah, uh, well, we will. Glazer really. in Hobart. So. Ah, well, yes, we are all your uh, glazing and shop fitting and that. Uh, Ballastrade, shop for our windows. Some of that stuff. Oh, yeah. 1916100. Bang. If you, if you get sick of me, uh, just ring Aussie. There uh, you go. Good. Done. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Absolute pleasure to talk to you and learn a bit more about yawning and uh, seeing over. I've just loved it, Glenn. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, lovely. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend, all. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. You're listening to the Friday Frothy. What a fantastic show. There we go. 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 There we